all ATG lower body principles covered last week apply, and there's two additional ones for the upper body. We'll recap from last week. So start very basic, ankle, knee, hip. We'd want those balanced, obviously. Wrist, elbow, shoulder. Okay, got some basics there. Now, there's also front and back. For example, tibialis is a breakthrough for the lower body. Imagine just completely not having that side of the lower leg and then wondering, I, for me, years and years and years of shin splints and things like that, extra little lower knee pains, ankle sprains that didn't heal, but missing a huge function. For the upper body, it's actually not that mysterious. People do that pretty well. So we got joint by joint, front and back. The full range, that's really missing in the upper body. Example in the lower body, backward treadmill. It's considered short range, but then we also go through to ATG split squat, which would be long range. So an example, a classic example in the upper body might be like um, a band pull apart, which I enjoy. It's simple, strengthens between the shoulder blades, but there's not, there's not tension here. So there's tension in the short range, but there's not tension in the long range, but we can train that with, here we are, Powell raise. Now there's no tension here. This is where there was tension with the band pull apart. Control, control, control. Now I'm getting more tension through there. Fun fact, Powell raise was named by Charles Poliquin after Mike Powell, whose Olympic long jump world record still stands from the 1990s. So don't assume it's all been done. Don't assume the status quo is anywhere near as good as it could be. It's not even remotely close to what we could achieve. And there's so many gems for the body like this when we actually put principles into it and don't have weak or tight links. And then it's like exponential long-term. It gets so much easier and more fruitful when you're training this way. I just finished the weekend. We've got Derek, 45 years old, dunking, performing like he's in his 20s. Jeff Reed, who hasn't been able to dunk since 23 regaining for the first time, trying this whole time, regaining the ability to dunk at 46 and then dropping down and doing the splits. I think that's more impressive than my own story. These re results aren't possible in a mainstream system. We gotta level up, we can. We're doing it right here in this video. Everything in here is coming to you. That's my job. So joint by joint, front and back, training the full range that includes the short range and the long range. And then angles. Angles is a bit different in the upper body than the lower body. The lower body is a bit dumber in the sense that it's more of a workhorse that actually does a little bit simpler patterns. And then the upper body actually has a little bit more that it can do. Now, that's just a theory. It's not worth really debating. You can think what you want on that. But I'll just show you full examples from my full ATG protocol. So we want to rebuild an ATG push-ups. So that means like a, you want to feel great like from this position rather than only from a partial range. Now, the reason I've never made a video ever saying what not to do is because I believe in having the full range. So how could I not like here if I believe, if I believe in, in everything? So I, I don't, I will never make a video on any exercise not to do because I believe in the full abilities of the body, the full, uh, abil the full, ranges. So push up, full range of motion and row. But now notice how it gets different when all of a sudden we go to an incline bench and a Powell raise and then an ATG shoulder press and a pull up. And then all the way, you know, you could if do it in moderation. Don't just like work through any difficulty. But for me, it's been a game changer is then even going. So we get all the way from the push up, the incline, the shoulder press, all the way to the pull over in the trap three raise. So that's how I know I can be, just like I know I can be cold here and not hurt my knees, I know I can be cold and not hurt my shoulders. So I've got mobility a bit more like I had when I was, when I was a kid, but I've got explosiveness. My arm swing when I jump in basketball, I've got explosiveness like an elite athlete. So that's possible from this logic-based training. So angle, so our, in the ATG philosophy is to be, uh, capable pressing and pulling through the full angles of the shoulder. And then the second uh, additional principle for the 
upper body is that you've got this whole torso thing going on. So it's not just as, okay, the knee relates to the elbow, but then the torso, you've got this in-between thing. So probably the two most different things we do in the ATG system. I mentioned pullover, but then this exercise, trap three ra raise, is really not to work the arms um, or the shoulder even, that's a bonus, but really we're trying to work a muscle in the middle of the back. So when you think of your traps, you think of those muscles that like shrug, but this is called a trap three because you have three rows of traps. That third row is just above your lower back. So when I make my elbows straight and when I clench my glutes and hold my body in a straight line to raise up, almost like in a Y shape, I've got 10% of my body weight per hand here. The average adult is weaker than the average 14 year old. Meaning you hit puberty, you start doing regular lifting, you get older. I mean, you can see it, go, go to an old folks home and look, you can just observe and see what happens to a body in a lifetime. It gets stiffer and weaker that way. So you have this muscle just above your lower back, which is chronically <laughs> deficient. The whole lower back is vulnerable. For me, this is a cheat code for the lower back is that just above my lower back, if I walk in any gym, I'm pretty confident that I'm the strongest just above my lower back in that gym. And I have 100% confidence that I won't have the strongest bench press in any gym, though that doesn't mean you could with these principles. I only do ATG and then my sport is basketball. If we look at Dawson Wyndham, he does ATG as the accessory, not to basketball, but to powerlifting, benches over 500 pounds and these kind of things. So these principles you can use, this is why ATG is not a sport and I won't let anyone ever try to make it into a sport. It's for you to support what you like to do. So that trap three raise is a common missing link in society. And then similarly, a common missing link is, I don't think it really matters which foot is ahead. The reason I like it to do it this way with this leg inside is because in basketball, if I'm trying to fake someone out, I have to not only step sideways, that doesn't really threaten the defender. I have to step sideways and forward and thrust my body this way. And then I need that QL to be strong. So I do it, I do it because mentally I think, okay, here I'm training so that I have an advantage when I now stretch into the quadratus lumborum, quad four, lumborum of the lumbar, the lower spine. So it's just a four-sided muscle on either side of your lower spine. And it happens to function that way. Happens to be very imbalanced in the average person. Some people can't even reach as high with one arm as the other because of lifetimes doing different sports and getting out of balance. It's kind of a cool stopping point that just came to mind is that the ATG system's only trying to restore what's natural. So the body shouldn't have any problems. It shouldn't need exercise. It should just function, chilling around the fire, boom, moving this, going there, not really overdoing any overuse motion. All of a sudden, okay, now baseball career or something. Well, okay, what are we overdoing? How do we reverse, like how do we balance it out? So this is a theory that you can believe what you wanna believe. I believe the body was designed well. So it's a theory, body was designed right. So if we're seeing broad problems and needing surgeries for things that weren't even contact injuries, chronic pains, like if, if you're seeing chronic low back pain, knee tendonitis for millions of people, all these things, I think I instantly jump to what are we doing? Where are we deviating from a natural lifestyle? And then what's the reversal of that? Where, what's the missing area? And now just in moderation, just as proven exercise principles of like, how does exercise work? How does strength training work? How does the body adapt? Now we fill that in. That's ATG. It's the best I can summarize it right there. So these QLs tend to be imbalanced and if you've ever lifted a weight, if you've ever done a bench press, your QL is probably too weak, like you didn't strength train it. So, I probably should have said this right off the bat, if you try this, don't do too much at first. You may be sore for like a week because it's as if you're lifting weights for the first time. So start, start without weight and do a single set. Um, and then over time, so I use in the opening, protocols, I just use a set. And then in the next phase, now we'll do a couple sets. And then from there, it's really just like so easy to maintain, but you can even use some assistance to start. So you have assistance and then unassisted and then boom, loaded. You're trying to stretch through there, squeeze up. I keep this list because 
maybe it helps to entertain in the videos, but at the end of the day, if I educate, like if this data somehow comes out of my mouth and with visual to show it, that's, that's what I've done, just staying true to what has worked. All lower body applies, but there's two additional upper body, joint by joint, front to back, training the full range. The upper body happens to have like, it shifts which muscles you're training by which angle you're pressing and pulling from. Um, this way you can have that more, that like explosion, but with mobility at the same time. And QL and, and trap three, I would have to mention just absolutely life-changing stuff. Conclusion, my body is really a product of someone who has done the exact sets and reps in the ATG programs for the lower body only, and who has done the bare minimum for the upper body. I usually just do one set. Like I don't, I don't not do the program. I usually just do a set. So someone could look at it and say, oh, if they only looked at me and didn't realize that millions of people are applying this data, and some of them are world-class powerlifters and bodybuilders, and they could say, oh, ATG, so that means it's just you're gonna like wanna like have a smaller upper body just because I do. Well, again, just basic isness. It's not it's not opinion, it's just how the body works, is that there is a volume, like how much you do, how much intent you put into it, maybe your genetic starting points or testosterone, but these things influence like how much muscle you're gonna build combined with how much food you eat. So I've gone the last my 13 year ATG journey, I've basically been in a caloric like maintenance. I haven't been eating to gain size. Funny enough, my legs have grown, but it's been just sort of like a shift of my upper body has gotten like denser and, and kind of stronger in some of the more, some of these more nitty gritty areas, but not like my upper body has not gotten heavier, but my lower body actually has filled out more because I put more sets and intensity into the lower body. So I hope that makes sense. ATG ain't me, I'm not ATG. You're ATG, much love.